Today I have to talk about anger. Everyone knows, everyone talks about anger issues. I have anger issues, my kids have anger issues. Everyone has anger issues. We need to manage this. One of the important parts of Tazgiya is to manage the anger. Fudail ibn Ayyad, Rahmatullah alayhi, he says, there is nothing better than being tolerant and controlling your anger. When you have anger, control it. There's nothing better amal, there's no better amal than controlling the anger. This is how important it is. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that anger, it destroys your iman just like the sweet honey can be destroyed by something bitter. It's called elwa. I don't know how to translate it in English. It's just like elwa destroys, just like elwa shahed ko kharaab kar deta hai. It destroys your iman. Iman is like a sweet thing in your life. It has sweetness and it can be destroyed by anger. And you can feel it. Right? If you are praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are making dhikr, adhkar, something is irritating you, you don't want to get angry. And once you get angry, it destroys all the feelings. Make dhikr for two hours and get angry, super angry at someone and you feel it. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said it, it's a hard, it destroys your iman. So why should you give a right on our desires, on our own things, our uh, anger to destroy a hard-earned iman that we earn. So as a, in tasawwuf, as a salik in tazkiyah, you have to control your anger. They say that if you don't control your anger and let it go, then it b brings bigger problems inside of you. What happens is, you got angry at someone. You didn't control it because you wanted to control it as a religious responsibility. You let it go or you maybe put it under the carpet so that I don't worry about it. But it would bring some kind of uh, aggression against that person in your life. What, what are you going to do next? Next time, you want to disrespect him no matter what. Next time you see each other, you want to put him down. Why? Because this aggression was in your heart because you did not settle with him two years ago. This is called kina. So kina came as a result of anger. Wasn't it better that you resolve the matter with him at right at the moment and two years forget about it? Never came back. Now you have hasad, you have jealousy. So just because you're not happy with him, you're not in good terms with him, you are jealous of him. Anytime he gets better in his life, you have a problem. Right? Okay, so what else? Takabbur. Takabbur happens because of the anger. Now just because he made you angry with something and you did not settle with him, now you think you're better than him. Now you're going to do everything to show pride over him, right? So there are millions and millions of problems that come as a result of anger. So this needs to be resolved. And Rasulullah sallallahu said, this is the real strength of a man. The real strength of a man is not who wrestles somebody's down. You're strong if you can control yourself at the time of anger. And this is how hard it is. How do I control my anger? First, I have to understand, where does it source from? Imam Ghazali, rahimahumullah ta'ala, says, this is the effect of the fire, right? We have these four uh, intrinsic uh, elements in us. Aag, pani, hawa, matti. These are the intrinsic fundamentals. Fire, water, air, and the soil. These are what we are composed of. So this is the element of fire. So who is created from fire? Khalaqtani minna. Shaitan says that you created me with the fire. So fire is the effect of the shaitan. And khalaqtahu min teen. Adam alayhi salam is made up of soil. So there is calmness in Adam alayhi salam. There is abdiyat in, this, uh, in, the, uh, in the quality of Adam alayhi salam. And there is restlessness in shaitan. Right? So first you have to understand that if I am acting upon my anger, who am I pleasing? I am pleasing shaitan and I am making myself so restless. Second thing is, See why it's happening to me. Why it's happening to me. It's very unpleasant to me because it did not go according to what, my, what I planned for. So when I did that, whose planning did go over my planning? Allah's planning. So if Allah's planning is above my planning, who am I to impose my planning? Right? So I should be happy and I should understand the reason that is making me unhappy is because Allah's planning, it superseded my planning. So what? Allah's planning has to supersede my planning because I'm nothing, right? And you have to understand that whatever happens, happens because of the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Somebody throws st stone at you. 
I was watching Hazrat's video just yesterday. Somebody throws a stone at you. It's going to make you unhappy, right? It's going to bring anger in you. So do you get angry at the stone or the person who threw the stone at you? At the stone. Or the person who threw the stone at you. Not the stone. Nobody worries about the stone because stone did not come because of his own free will, right? It's at the person who threw the stone at you. In the same way, if you think in a bigger scheme of things, everything is working in the, uh, with the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If somebody speaks ill to us, somebody disrespects us, somebody is not listening to us, something is not going according to our will, it is just like a whole stone in the, in the hands of the big planner. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disrespected us through a person, maybe there is a lesson we need to learn. Maybe our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not all the best. Maybe we were supposed to do and we have failed in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fixing us through maybe, maybe sometimes hearing words from our people. And you know, people in the older times, they used to do that all the time. One time Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, who was the best person after the Anbiya alayhi musalam. An old woman came and he said such and such things to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Right? And uh, just inappropriate things. And he said, you don't know me enough. I have more shortcomings than what you just mentioned. Whatever you said is not enough. I have more problems than what you know. There is Malik bin Dinar rahimahumullah ta'ala. Somebody disrespected her, disrespected him saying that you have a problem with showing off. Whatever amal you do, you try to show it, show it off to people. And he said, you are the real person who understood me. You are the only one who understood me up until now. Nobody knew this about me. So when you look at yourself, then you never get angry, you know. And sometimes uh, they say that sometimes you are busy in a task, too busy in such a big task that you don't worry about these little things. That's one thing. Sometimes when you're really busy with something in your housework or maybe in your school work or your college work, somebody says something, goes by, you don't even pay attention because you're too busy in a bigger job. So there is a sheikh, his name is Sheikh Rabi ibn al-Haytham. Somebody cursed at him. He said, he didn't pay any attention to him. Cursed him again and he said, I'm really busy in something very important. Between me and the Jannah, there is a valley that I'm busy crossing. If I cross it successfully, whatever, how your words would affect me? What do I have to do with your words? And if I do not, if I fail, whatever you have said is not enough, say more. Because I deserve more. I couldn't cross, cross this valley, cannot make it to the Jannah. So if I make it to the Jannah, whatever you say is useless. If I don't, then I deserve more. So this was the attitude. So this is the attitude. When so, then this is something that you can control the anger. Anger controlling. Anger management. They say, you don't have to eliminate anger. This is a virtue Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept in you to preserve your rights, your interests. And one of the things Imam Ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala says that it is like a dog. It is like a dog that you take to preserve your rights. I mean, a hunters, they would use a dog to hunt. And if there is nothing to hunt, then it's going to sit quiet. There is a dog that you have for home security, homes, uh, you know. But if there is no invaders, it's not going to bark. It's going to sit quiet. So look at yourself. Your anger, if it's if it's working, if it's in action, why it is? Because there is interests that are not being protected, right? So if those are lawful and they are the real needs, then you should worry about them. If not, then you should, you, you should uh, fix your, civilize your anger. For example, sometimes you get angry because you have a need of kibr. You have a need of self-known, of self-fame. You want to be highlighted. You want to be praised. If you have such needs and those needs are not met, then your dog, your anger is going to bark, right? So reducing your needs is going to also reduce your anger. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said to civilize your anger. He did not say to uh, eliminate it. One time there is a Sahabi. His name is Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As radiyallahu an. He said, Ya Rasulullah, should I record everything that you say? He said, yes. He said, what if you said something in the, in the state of anger? Rasulullah sallallahu said, even then, whatever comes out of my mouth is still haq. So Prophet sallallahu did not say, I don't get angry. He said, whatever I say, even in the state of anger is haq. Right? 
So Prophet ﷺ had a very con good control on the anger. We do not have to eliminate it. We need to c control it, civilize it. And Rasulullah's life, Uswa, is full of that. You know? Prophet ﷺ, he had to make the hijrah. He had to leave Makkah. Ten years of you know, hard life in Medina, he came back. And he's touching his hand with the Kaaba and he says, Allah is one. And there is no one partners with him. And he fulfilled his promise and he helped his servant and he gave victory to his servant. And he says that, what do you expect of me? What do you think of a person who is standing in front of you? Everyone said, all we expect from you is khair. We have not, we have not seen anything but khair from you. This is the time Prophet ﷺ has full power and authority, right? And he, has, he can do anything and everything. And he says, La tathriba alaykum al My words would be the same as my brother Yusuf when he saw his brothers, not the three ba'alaykum al there's no blames on you. So this is what, this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa attitude was at the time when people expected anger and harsh uh, revenge. So this is very important. Today, we have to calm down with our children. We have to calm down with our spouses. We have to calm down with our friends. A lot of times we make fun, too much fun with each other. And that disgraces us. That's what Rasulullah said, do not make too much fun. It's going to dis disgrace you. What happens is when you become so open with your friends, you make fun, you say jokes to him, he so says jokes, jokes back to you. Now you cannot bear it. Now it gets you angry. Now you cannot say anything on his face because you know you started first. Now you're so upset, you want to disgrace him. You become jealous of him. You want to destroy him. All these feelings come because of because of anger. So control that. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, who has power to execute his anger, but he stays calm with his family and his children, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives his sin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive his right on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. Wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen.